Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the service this morning. Y'all, I sound like Southern here now. Uh, I'd like to mention a few uh, things that are I'd like to highlight here for today. Uh, today, right after service, there's going to be a bake sale at Aldersgate Chapel for the United Methodist Women. And I guess we're going to have um, a reception for Richie Dixon and Hannah Bell also. This evening will be the contemporary service. It's called the Spark Worship Service. I'm not sure what that means other than get out there and give you a spark, get you going, maybe. That's this evening. Uh, Tuesday, we're going to be hanging of the greens. Supper will be here, so I'll be here. There's going to be supper, I'm sure. Um, and then also at the First Baptist Church, they're having a community Thanksgiving service. So maybe we can try to, I don't know if it's going to coordinate time-wise for both, but probably not. Let's see. Possibly. It might be at eat twice that night. Um, Edna wanted me to mention that we do have stockings in the back for the Polk residents. Uh, there's some mittens back there, but I'm sure there's some other stuff that could be put into them. And I believe that's all I had for mention for announcements. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Jeff for his. Jeremy? Just a brief announcement. If you ordered Christmas greens from the Boy Scouts, those are in. <coughs> they are in the back of the church. You can see uh, Tristan or Garrett after church to pick those up. Thank you. I just have a few announcements. Um, I, I got this flyer in the mail um, this week. Uh, it's a fundraiser for Natalia Booth, and it's at the Franklin Elks Elks Club on November 27th um, from 4 to 7 p.m. It's to raise some funds. Uh, she has a um, mitochondrial disease um, and the family is trying to raise some funds up for that. That is on, on the 27th um, from 4 to 7. Um, also, I wanted just to let you know about some of the things that are coming up in the life of the church. Uh, uh, we have a very busy Advent season coming up. Uh, if, if you know anything about December 4th, which I think is the Saturday, um, uh, first sat one, second Saturday of Advent, we are going to be doing um, a church tour. Um, they're going to be having tours for all the older churches in town, and people are going to go from um, church to church to, uh, to look at the different decorations um, if you want to be a part of hosting that here, because um, we're going to be having our church um, open, you might want to talk with um, uh, Dolores Davidson. I think that is from 1 to 4.30 that afternoon. <clears throat> On the 5th, here, which is a Sunday, we will be having our Happy Birthday Jesus party after church. Then the next weekend, which is the 12th and the 13th, there, it will be Cantata Weekend with Christ Church. Um, you want to check that out. It's called, um, it's in the bulletin, it's called Light this year. Uh, we have some folks from our congregation singing in it. Um, and then the 20th will be uh, the Messiah uh, concert. Uh, the Barrel Civic will be coming for the second time here um, on, on the 20th. Um, we will be having our cantata in the morning. Um, and then the, the Messiah will be singing here in the afternoon at 3 o'clock. And then we'll have our contemporary service in the evening. That will be one busy day, but um, it's going to be busy in the life of the church during the Advent season, um, and we'll keep filling you in as time goes on. Thanks. Any other announcements this morning? Well, with that said, let's begin our worship this morning in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. If I could ask you all to please rise and join in the opening hymn, Rejoice the Lord is King, number 715.
and join me in the call to worship. Almighty God, who gave your Son, Jesus Christ, a realm where all peoples, nations, languages should serve him, make us loyal followers of our living Lord, that we may always hear his word, follow his teachings, and live in his spirit, and hasten the day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord, to your eternal glory. Amen. Please be seated. Kids want to come forward this morning? Yes. I don't know where they're at today. Um, maybe they'll come in a little bit. But anyway, um, I brought something with me today. Have you ever wore a crown before? You probably have gone to Burger King or something like that and, and had a crown. Um, um, so I brought this with me today. I was thinking about today uh, the church recognizes the, the Sunday before Thanksgiving a lot of times, the Sunday before Advent as Christ the King Sunday. So... Have you ever thought about what it might be like to be a king? Um, do you? Um, so, have, have, have you ever read a story with a king in it? You know, like, if you, if you do a lot of, like, the old... Yeah, a princess is kind of like a king, but um, that's the daughter of a king, usually. But a king does a lot of different things. He reigns, he, uh, he takes charge sometimes. But you know what? Jesus says in the Bible that he is king. Um, and you know what? He is accused uh, in the last days of his life as being the king. And they, want, want, they ask him, are you the king of the Jews? And he says, I am a king, but the king of truth. And that's what we've got to think about when we worship Jesus as king, that he is Lord of our life, that he is in charge of our life, that we give him our control and all our things belong to, 
to Jesus. Um, and so we worship Jesus by calling him King of Kings, Lord of Lords, uh, Prince of Peace. So as we go to Christmas, because Christmas is coming, um, let's remember that Jesus is our King. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for coming to this earth, and we thank you for telling us of your kingdom. Help us to realize and recognize you as king of our life. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Thanks for coming guy. up, you guys. Let's greet each other this morning with the love of Christ. Uh, it's great to be with you. Um, why don't we turn our hearts to God? Uh, pray with me. Lord God, as we come to your word today, we pray that you would speak to us, that you would um, mold us into the people that you want us to be as we look at your word. Help it to transform who we are and how we live. And we just pray this in your name. Amen. The scripture passage that we are looking at this morning is John chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. Um, if you are able this morning, stand as we read the gospel message. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, do you ask this on, on your own or did you? Did others tell you about me? And Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king, for this, is, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Well, again, like I said to the, the children today, today is Christ the King Sunday. Um, this is the Sunday that we celebrate uh, before Advent, uh, Advent starts, and we look at Jesus as being king. You know, the idea of king 
is not a new idea at all. It is something that we may have grown up reading about in our children's books or our fairy tales. Um, I have preached on kings and kingdoms before, but I want to go back with you today and look at what it means to be a king. I think we might have done this before, but it's always good to do it again. You know, because we are a little bit unfamiliar about what a king means, what it means to be a king. For you see, in our country, we have a president and a cabinet that, that runs things. In our schools, we have principals, but we don't call him or her queen or king. Our boss that we may work for, um, they may want to be called king or queen, um, but we don't let them be called that. The man of the house uh, may have wanted to be called king, and maybe some are called that, but usually husband or partner is better. The word king in our society is thought to be arrogant. If, if I would say this morning that I am king of the church, I'm sure you all would be talking about me during your dinner conversation today. We have kings in our society, but they are the burger kind, or the king of pop, Michael Jackson, or we call Elvis as king. But real kings, we don't have them. Sure, we read about them, and we have them in our cartoons, in our, our neighborhoods of make-believes. But we don't have kings, per se, in our culture. So I thought it would be good to look at what a king is and, and what specifically is a biblical king, because we see kings in the Bible. So we're going to look at what it means to be a, a biblical king. Maybe you have heard about King David or King Solomon or King Saul, um, but who were they and what kind of kings did they have in the Bible? The office of king uh, was common in, in the Middle East since the beginning of time, pretty much. He was usually over a centralized area such as a city. His authority seemed to be hereditary meaning it came from the family tree. It was handed down, and it was thought that it was divinely appointed, meaning that the God of that particular land appointed the king. But what does it look like in our Jewish heritage? What does that kind of king look like? Well, in the early times, the family or the clan of the early Israelites was ruled by the patriarch, the father. And during the Exodus, the rule was exercised by Moses, and then we see the rule of Joshua. But it was under what they called a theocracy, theo meaning God, a government that was led by Almighty God, and God was the ultimate authority. When Israel first settled in Palestine, the tribes were ruled largely by village fathers who would call a certain man to lead the, their militia against an army. And these people were known as judges. They were not always men. There was um, a, a, a very famous one named Deborah. And there were many de judges. There was Gideon and Jephthah. Um, you may have heard of uh, Samson um, in the Bible. The book of Judges, however, ends on a note of social chaos, and it was due to a lack of a king. So the following period was one of improvement um, under their uh, judicial system. It was being both religious um, and, and full of judges under the lead of Eli and Samuel. Samuel became the king maker. It was thought that God was still head, but because of the threat of the Philistines, the enemy, they needed a king. So the king could be thought of as a pr pr protector in a way. Saul was the first king, um, and his success as a, a warrior 
was his main qualification for the role as the first king of Israel. After Saul, David became the ideal king. You know, he's the guy with the, the slingshot. He took down the giant. Um, he established a dynasty that lasted for over 400 years until the breakup of the state in 587 B.C. The main responsibility of the king at that time was main, the maintaining of righteousness. And that happened by obeying this thing called the Torah or the law, the scriptures at that time. And it was, the duty was not only t to act as judge, we find in 1 Kings, but to preserve justice and to proclaim the law, the Torah. But we see in David that he was not the perfect king. You could see some, some stories about David in, in the Bible. Yet, we know him to be a man after God's own heart. And if you read scripture, you'll see that there were many wicked kings. And the prophets, that's why the prophets step up to speak against the kings and to, to remind the kings of their waywardness. After the kingdom's fall and the Israelites are taken into captivity, we see many of the priests take the role of, 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 of the king, and some of them claim to be that of the Messiah or Savior. So as you can see, the Israelites are expecting and they're wanting a king. In fact, the covenants tell them that there will be a great king that come from the line of David. And the great king was promised from the, uh, from the reign of Israel that will reign over them. But you know what? They are expecting a king on a mighty horse, a warrior. And what do we see? We see Jesus on a donkey. And here in our passage today, Jesus is brought up on charges for being king of the Jews, which is a charge of treason against the emperor. In fact, Pilate, the governor, says, do you claim to be the king of the Jews? And Jesus tells Pilate that his concept of kingdom is different than Pilate's, different than his. If his kingdom, if Jesus' kingdom were really a threat to the empire, surely Jesus would have organized a revolt. But his kingdom, Jesus' kingdom, is not from here. The whole idea of Jesus' kingdom is non-political. And this is confusing for Pilate. And he asks him, so then, are you a king? He must have been thinking that Jesus was a king of some sort because he had heard that. So Jesus tells him that he came to bear witness to the kingdom. He came to bear witness to God, to show us who God is and how he will save us. He came to talk or tell us about salvation. You know, the more I read the Gospels, especially the Gospel of John, I am convinced that the main purpose of Jesus was to tell us who God is, to show us who God is and to point to the kingdom. You know, we are so hung up on words sometimes, aren't we? Language can be a huge barrier sometimes to understanding because we have so many presuppositions about what these words mean. Kingdom is one of those words. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of heaven. It is for the future. But it is also for now. You know, I wish I had all day to expound and talk about that idea about the kingdom. Yet I don't. Unless you want to stay today, I, I don't have anything to do till about 4 o'clock, we could stay if you'd like to. Any volunteers? It's something that we need to process on a continual basis. Many of us need to, to, 
to explore the kingdom a little bit further. Yet maybe think of it this way, simply. Where you see good where you, is where you see God. Where you see God, you see the kingdom. Yet because of who we are in a state of sin, we only see glimpses. And you know what? Jesus came to give us, give us the picture of the kingdom. And we kill them. We put them on the cross. So sometimes I, I think as humans, we don't necessarily want to see the kingdom. We are too busy trying to satisfy our own needs. And some of us are trying to see the kingdom, yet other people are getting in the way. You know, I think it's like this sometimes, like trying to watch a movie at a movie theater, and this lady with a big hat comes in and sits right in front of us, and then you can't see anymore. You can only see glimpses. Yet I want to tell you something this morning. Yes, we can see glimpses of the kingdom today, yet there will be a day when we see the kingdom in its glory. Jesus will come again. And there will be no more sorrow and no more pain. We experience God's glory. We will be in the presence of God Almighty. We will welcome back our King and we will be restored. Yet, we need to understand this and be ready. We rejected Christ one time, let's not reject him again. For you see, the King the idea of a king is not a new idea. Yet we need to be seeking out this king, not worrying about the return, but being ready, knowing what it means. King Jesus, so that we can be ready for his kingdom. Let's pray. Lord God, as we prepare for this Advent season, it is right and good to first contemplate you as king so that as we prepare for the newborn king, we can understand what we are preparing for. Thank you for this season of remembering your son, the way he came into the world. Help our hearts be ready. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let's join together with the, the hymn of praise, Great is Thy Faithfulness, number 140.
seated. As we go to the Lord in prayer today, let me remind you of the folks that we're praying for in our bulletin, um, the joys and the concerns. Let's share some of those now. I, I, I know one joy that I want to lift up today, 63 years this coming Thursday for you guys. Happy anniversary to the Huffs. 63 years. That's a, that's a while longer than I've even been around. So God bless you guys. Happy anniversary. We also have a, a wedding that we're going to celebrate this coming Saturday, um, the Dixon wedding. Um, and we want to celebrate that with Richie and Hannah um, as they celebrate this coming um, Saturday. Um, we'll have two Hannah Dixons in the house then. So that'll be a, a great celebration um, this coming Saturday. Anything else to lift up or to pray for? A joy. Steve. 31. 31. That's almost half as long as 63. So. Amen. Uh, we had the largest community dinner ever last Amen. Thursday, almost 200 meals were served. So we had the staff and the food caterers, and it was wonderful. And thank you to many of you for coming out there. I think God uh, worked and also provided the desserts for us. So quite a joy and a blessing that day. It was uh, usually at quarter to four. There's a sparse few folks um, waiting to, to eat, and we were almost full to capacity at quarter to, to five this, this past time. It was exciting. It was very busy, um, and that's a great ministry if you want to help out with that. Um, it's, it always happens the third Wednesday of every month. Um, I think the Rotary is helping us out this coming time, so we're grateful for that, but you can still please come and, and be a part of that. Along with that, we want to be grateful and thankful and praise God for the Keeling concert that happened this past uh, week. We had a little over 200 or so here, uh, maybe close to 300, I'm not sure exactly on the count, but it was a great celebration um, last Sunday night. Um, another joy, this is a Sunday of, of praises, which, which is a great thing, is we had an opportunity yesterday uh, to serve the high school band. Um, the high school band had to play at Edinburgh, um, and they had to be out there, I think they had to be at school, some, something like 10.30, go out and play um, for the playoff game um, that they, they were a part of. And then after, after the playoff game, um, they had to be back here at five, they got back here at close to five, and had to be at the light up thing at five o'clock. And we thought, um, Lisa Birchfield was at our council meeting and kind of joked, wouldn't it be nice if the churches fed the kids because we don't know how they're going to get fed that, that, um, that uh, Saturday. And so Christ Church and First Church went together, got a bunch of pizzas um, and had some sl slider sandwiches left over and a bunch of people, band parents collected cookies and we fed about 105 kids yesterday over Christ Church, which is where their bus was going. Um, yesterday. So that was an a opportunity for um, on-the-spot uh, um, cooperative ministry with Christ Church and a way to reach out to our community. So we've had a lot of opportunities to reach out to our community, and that's one way to do kingdom work, uh, guys, and, and I, I, I praise God for that. Any other things to, to lift up and to, uh, or to pray for today? Stephanie. And, and we'll pray for you in the process of that. Losing a sibling is not the easiest thing. Thank you for saying that. You called me this week, and I, I failed to lift that up. So pray for Stephanie's sister, and tell me her name again. Amanda. And her family, um, Amanda passed away this past week, and we can be lifting up that family. Anything else? Steve Holtz, as many of you know, um, is having carpal tunnel surgery this week. You can be praying for him. 
Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, as we think about you as king, we pray that uh, we would be worshiping you, not just on Sunday mornings, but all through our week. Help us give, to give control to you. Help us to give our love to you. Help us not to be distracted by the things of the world. And forgive us, Lord, when we are distracted and we walk away from you. Lord, we, we thank you so much for the many blessings that you are bestowing upon us, for the, the community, the wonderful community dinner that we had this week, and for the opportunity to serve in this way. What a blessing that was for us. For the Keeling concert this past week, and I thank you for the folks who got that all, all ready, for the, the refreshments that were served. And thank you for the opportunity that we had last night to serve the high school band. Lord God, um, we thank you for the many opportunities to reach out. We also want to lift up some of the things that were left lifted this morning. Um, we want to pray for uh, Stephanie's family as they're going through this time of loss of her sister Amanda. Lord, we pray for them. We pray for peace and joy to come upon them during this hard time. I also want to pray for a family, and I'm not sure on the name, but I, I know that there was a baby that passed away this week, and we would just want to lift up that, that family to you. We want to pray for those in our community that are, are struggling um, financially, that are struggling emotionally, spiritually. Help us to learn how to be the church to them. We lift up those people who are having surgeries. We're going to pray for Steve Holtz and his carpal tunnel. We want to pray for those who are, are in our caring places. We want to lift up Rose Shalott and Helen Mortimer to you this morning. And for those who are in need of prayer this morning that are, are not coming to, to our minds, we just lift them up to you. Thank you for celebrations of, such as uh, anniversaries, uh, 31 and 63, um, and many more that are out there. And we, we praise you for those years together and for the many years to come. And Lord, as you have blessed us, you also have blessed us with the teaching us how to pray. And we pray that prayer celebrating who you are this morning as King, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. One thing I failed to, to thank God for and, and, and celebrate was that our contemporary uh, band uh, that is uh, leading us in a lot of our worship on, on um, our contemporary spark services uh, we're in, was in the, uh, the light up night parade yesterday. So I want to praise God and thank them for all their work and um, with, with that service. If you have a chance tonight, 7 o'clock, it is a great time of worship. And they've done some great stuff to the stage downstairs, creating a, a really neat atmosphere for worship. With that said, let's prepare our hearts this morning for the morning offering.
sins. So help us take this offering and extend a blessing to our community. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let's go forth knowing that Jesus is king today, that the, the Father has provided, that the Son has sacrificed, and the Spirit continues to do a good work within and through us. Amen. Amen.